last month's episode, I reflected on the life and work of our good friend the Duke, John Wayne. And afterwards, I got to thinking, who was our English equivalent? Who was our tough as old boots, man's man? At first, it was a bit of a struggle, and then it hit me. Of course, it was none other than our beloved Charles Hawtrey. The stupid amongst you may be questioning this, but there are two very specific reasons why these two were so alike. Firstly, they both drank like a fish. And secondly, although for very different reasons, they both walked like a cowboy. Hawtrey made an early start to a career that was to span nearly 60 years. Following study at the Italia Conti Academy of Theatre Arts in London, he embarked on a career in the theatre as both actor and director before he moved to the cinema where he regularly appeared supporting Will Hay in the 30s and 40s in films such as The Ghost of St Michael's and Where's That Fire? Throughout the 60s and 70s, he became a leading member of the Carry On cast, mostly playing characters that ranged from the wimpish through the effete to the effeminate. His last film was Carry On Abroad in 1972, after which he was dropped from the series. Hawtrey's growing alcohol consumption, which had begun to noticeably worsen since Carry On Cowboy in 1965, was beginning to affect his work. See? A cowboy film! I told you he was similar to Wayne! The last straw occurred in 1972, when, in a bid to finally gain higher billing, Hawtrey withdrew from a Carry On Christmas television programme in which he was scheduled to appear. After this, the producer Peter Rogers, who sadly died earlier this year, stopped using Hawtrey for carry-on films, and he slipped into the relative obscurity of provincial summer seasons and pantomime, where he played heavily on his carry-on persona. Very little is known about Hawtrey's early years, or later private life. He guarded his relationships very carefully. Perhaps no surprise in an age where male homosexual behaviour was illegal and punishable by a prison sentence. His outrageous drunken promiscuity, however, did not portray homosexuality in a positive light, nor did his general demeanour and increasing eccentricity with those around him earn him many, if any, close friends. In later years, Hawtrey's mother had to come and live with him because she was suffering from senile dementia. Kenneth Williams describes an incident in which Hawtrey's mother's handbag caught fire when she dropped her cigarette into it. Hawtrey, without missing a beat, poured in his cup of tea and carried on his story. In her autobiography, Barbara Windsor wrote about Hawtrey's alcohol problem and him flirting outrageously with football legend George Best. While filming Carry On Spying, she thought he'd fainted from fright at a dramatic scene in a conveyor belt. In fact, he had passed out because he was drunk. Whenever he came on set with a crate of R. White's lemonade, everyone knew he'd been on a big old drinking binge. Nevertheless, he was an integral face to the Carry On family, smoking woodbines profusely and playing cards between takes with Sid James and the gang. Hawtrey finally retired to Kent in the 1980s, where he spent most of his time drinking. He cut an eccentric figure in the small town, frequently cruising on the promenade in extravagant clothing, waving cheerfully to the sailors. He caused a minor news scandal in August 1984 when his house caught fire after he went to bed with a teenager and left a cigarette burning. Shame he didn't have a cup of tea to hand. In October 1988, he was taken to hospital after breaking his leg in a fall outside of a public house. He was discovered to be suffering from peripheral vascular disease, a condition of the arteries brought on by a lifetime of heavy smoking. Sadly, his last appearance was in children's TV show Super Gran, a sad indictment of anyone's life. As if to add salt to the wound, the episode also featured comedian Billy Connolly. Hawtrey was told in order to save his life, his legs would have to be amputated. He refused, allegedly saying he preferred to die with his boots on, and died almost a month later, aged 73. On his deathbed, Hawtrey supposedly threw a vase at his nurse who asked for one final autograph. It was the last thing he ever did. His ashes were scattered in Mortlake Crematorium, close to Chiswick in London. Here ends the similarities between the Duke and Hawtrey. For as Wayne finally met his maker to the tributes of kings and queens everywhere and a nation in mourning, Hawtrey slipped past quietly with no friends nor family attending his funeral. Miserable bastards. Oh, come on! My flies are undone!